Hello folks and welcome to a new episode of the Home Studio Build series. For those who don't know me, my name is Leonardo and I have been documenting the process I have been following to build my dream home studio. Today's talk is about sound diffusion. I will tell you why it is important, how I built this three-dimension primitive root diffuser and how it changed the acoustics of this room. Are you ready? Let's get into it. Diffusion is a very important part of acoustic treatment, the other one being absorption. While absorption aims to reduce the sound pressure level within a room, diffusion attempts to create a homogeneous distribution of the sound pressure in all frequencies in every part of the room. Said in other words, what we want to achieve is that the room sounds the same in every different spot. The most important effects of sound diffusion are, first, it helps treating a room without losing its liveliness, and secondly, it prevents coloration of certain frequencies because of accentuation or attenuation. Now, I know this might sound a little bit abstract, so let me demonstrate. Let's say that we have a room with parallel walls, like the one we are right now. In this wall here, we have a speaker, and this speaker is producing a sound, so the sound wave travels across the room until it reaches the opposite wall, and then it bounces back. What happens in the middle of the room then is that the wave that is bouncing back collides with another wave that is coming out of the speaker. Now, this produces several different effects, but there are a few of them that are especially harmful to your sound. The first one is that the room explodes. Seriously, if these two waves are in phase for the same frequency, what will happen when they collide with each other is that they will add up creating what we call a resonance. Then the listener will have the impression that certain frequency is specially loud, which is not true. On the contrary, if those waves are out of phase, they will cancel each other, giving the impression that there is no sound at that frequency. You can already foresee and imagine what effects this will have in the decision-making of somebody who is, for example, mixing a song. The person will believe that certain frequencies are too boosted while other frequencies are cut, and then they will try to compensate with EQ, which is a mess. But then how do we solve this problem? If we could somehow make that when a wave bounces from a wall, it does not come back in the opposite direction, but instead it scatters all over the place, we could minimize the effect of accentuation and attenuation of certain frequencies. But that is enough talk. I will show you now how I built it and what was the before and after in the effects of the acoustic treatment of this room. The first step is to figure out what type of diffuser you want or need. I recommend that as a first step you determine the measurements of the base of the wells you will be using because that will condition the rest of the calculation as well as the higher frequency. In my case I've used a wood profile of 4.4 by 4.4 centimeters. The next step is to determine how big your diffuser will be or how much area of your room you need to cover. In my case, I decided to start with a single diffuser of 127.59 cm by 52.8 cm. The criteria for this decision was essentially to cover the biggest area without hanging too much weight on the walls, whose mechanical resistance I highly question. Then you need to determine which frequencies you would like to diffuse. As I said before, the higher frequency will be determined by the size of the wells. You need to be aware that the lower the lowest frequency is, the higher your wells will be. At this point, you should have already the blueprint of your diffuser, as well as cutting and shopping lists for the wood. I recommend that for the backplate you don't go thinner than 1.5 cm. Once again, I recommend to outsource the cutting of the wood as it will make your life way easier, cheaper and cleaner and the results will be way better. In this case I need to thank again my good friend Carl for having taken care of that part for me in such professional manner. You will need to sand each and every piece of wood before working with it, otherwise the glue will not work properly and you might get splints in your fingers when touching it. After that, the process is quite simple, and actually fun. Just print the sheet with the blueprint the website generates and starts gluing. 
I have used an industrial fast drying glue and although the manufacturer recommends 5 hours of drying, I left it overnight, just to be sure. Be aware that the diffuser will be quite heavy and that you will need help hanging it. Also make sure your wall is strong enough and that you are using proper screws and plugs for this job. Now it's time to check the measurements and effect this diffuser does have on the acoustics of this room. I have taken this measure right before installing the diffuser. And this one directly after screwing it to the wall. Same settings, same configuration. Although it does not cover a significant area of the room, it also does introduce some mass which also changes the acoustic conditions. Comparing the frequency response of the two different conditions does not reveal too much, just an overall attenuation above 50 Hz. When we check the waterfall graphics, we already see a difference in the effective frequency range of the diffuser. As you can see, the combing has disappeared. We can check this further with the spectrogram, which shows much less accentuation past 130 Hz. Acoustic treatment is not a magic wand that drastically and immediately transforms the conditions of a room. It is a trial and error process that can be accelerated with the help of professionals and a great investment. Mine is an ongoing path and although the effects are not too noticeable yet, this diffuser in combination with my absorbers plus the acoustic elements I will be adding over time will make the difference in the long run. I encourage you to build your own diffuser because the small investment that you will make will take you quite far in your understanding of your own room and its acoustics. Not to mention how great it looks. So the placement of this diffuser is not by chance. I have placed it especially here because my speakers are on the other side of the room, so whenever the sound wave generated by those speakers reach this wall here, it will be bounced and scattered all over the place, achieving the effect that I have described before. Well, and that's it for today's video. I hope you have learned something, I hope I have brought you some inspiration and that I have triggered some interesting thoughts in your mind. If you have any questions, if you want to know more about it or again, just engage into some conversation, let me know and I will be glad to talk to you. Next week we will be doing the last video of this series, which will be basically a recap of everything that has been done with a nice before and after of this very nice room that I have built for myself. Thank you very much for watching and see you next week.